Hey guys, so I looked at my older videos and some of my most popular videos, at least for MTG Finance, were me picking cards to actually buy. Now obviously I'm not, I cannot see the future and these are just cards that I like and I myself will buy or have already purchased. I don't own that many copies of any of these cards. I do own a few copies from just playing during, let's say, Urza's Legacy. You naturally will own this because no one wanted it. And I am going to focus on both the foil and the non-foil. So I like the non-foil of Second Chance. Anytime you have the ability to take an extra turn for two and a blue, it's not bad. With a lot of cards today, you can control what life you are at. Now there is a big difference. This card is $2.30 as a non-foil, but $38 as a foil. It is also on the reserve list. All the cards today are on the reserve list. I like them for different reasons, but I like this card because any card on a reserve list that says take an extra turn is going to be inherently valuable later down the road when so its limitations are not that much. I mean, during your upkeep, if you have five or less life, you get an extra turn. So you play this when you have plenty of life, and then maybe you're playing a, an EDH death shadow type of build where you control what life you can ping yourself, and you get down to... An extra turn is always very, very good, no matter what format it will be in. An extra turn that comes from an Urza's Legacy card that is on the reserve list, that's a lot of good stuff combined into one package. So I'm almost certain that this card should be as a non-foil over $5, maybe by the end of 2000. Let's give it a year. These cards have the benefit of being very long-term speculations. So it's not like we have to fire sell them at any time. We should have plenty of time to go and buy these cards as well to accumulate a bunch of them. Kind of like the Phileas. I like it on a reserve list. Extra turn, blue. I like it. All right, next one, Kasa. So this card is beautiful. It is gorgeous. It is one of my favorite pieces of artwork in Magic. They really don't make Magic cards. The artwork with the dinosaurs, I mean, yeah. I would take this over it. It's also by Rebecca Gray. Gra? Gray? I think it's pronounced Gray. So it is very iconic in my opinion. I don't know how much the original artwork would go for, but I would be interested in buying it. This card is fantastic. It's always been semi-valuable. It's not very good, but cards on a reserve list. Oh, I, I think I mentioned all these cards are on a reserve list. Cards on a reserve list do not have to be great to be pricey. And some of them, like the Fairy Queen from Legends, which is some ridiculous amount of money, isn't, and it's not even as good as this card. I believe the price is dictated by the artwork. I truly actually believe that. So when a card becomes a collector's item, we're no longer going to compare it to cards like today. So you cannot compare it. Like a five drop today gets you way more than, way more than this card. But being a reserve list legend, as well as having some of the prettiest artwork in all of Magic, I like it. So from here on out, I'm going to try to do a better job explaining why I personally like it. I know a lot of you guys nitpick certain issues. Oh, you didn't know about this in 93. You didn't know about this in 94 and this, this format or it wasn't this. I'm good at picking cards that I like. And those cards actually go up in price more often than not. Falia, Malera. I mean, even when I pick a pre-order card, I've played Magic so much since I was like a little kid. I grew up with Magic. My first pack was Beta. That I look at a card, and I can identify, hmm, pattern recognition. So what I do, I do a lot of analytics. I'm obviously Google Analytics certified, which doesn't mean anything because even like even like a monkey can get Google Analytics certified, in my opinion. A very smart monkey, maybe a chimpanzee. A chimpanzee could. I heard those are like really smart monkeys. Are they? Yeah, I think pretty sure they're monkeys, not. 
because the apes are much bigger. I was watching um, Planet of the Apes. Okay, tangent avoided. Urgbog Justice, also on a reserve list, also at a $2 price. I think a lot of these reserve list cards, Weatherlight, the Urge's Legacy, Alliance, they haven't gone up yet. I was very shocked to see a revised card go up on the reserve list because I assumed revised would take far longer to go up given the fact it was printed into Oblivion. When you compare it to Unlimited, there's so much more revised than Unlimited. But I was wrong about that and I know that Weatherlight, eventually these cards from Weatherlight, Urza's Legacy, Alliance, they will go up in price. They will because people will run out of targets to buy and they have to pick this. A Heat Stroke is another good one. I like it at $2.61. I think it's very good. In a year, we're going to go back and look at these videos and see like if I did well, if I did poorly. Heat Stroke is, I mean, whenever you have enchantment that has, it doesn't say here, but like a global effect, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Plus, its effect is so massive. It has such a fun EDH effect that I don't see this ever being less, I mean, could they reprint it? No. It's on a reserve list. And that's the key here. The key is this card, because it cannot be reprinted, will only get more valuable in time. A, a la all the reserve list cards. For the most part, I mean, a reserve, reserve list card could be overpriced right now and then go down in price. That's not really, in my opinion, like what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that these unique abilities will only exist on these cards. And therefore, should another card be printed which highlights this card, you're looking at a huge, you're looking at this card going to $10 overnight. I don't know what that card would be, but I could definitely see something. And people are like, oh, what about Heatstroke from Wonderlight? Oh, it's on a reserve list. Uh, so I like it. You know, I really enjoyed making MTG Finance videos. I think I've said that before, but not maybe in the best way. I like MTG Finance, but I don't like the MTG Finance community. I feel like a lot of them are behind paywalls or they're trying to get money from you. And I don't know. I just never liked the concept of paywalls in MTG Finance because it kind of defeats the purpose of MTG Finance, which is to have information out there. This is one of my favorite cards of all time. I remember how powerful this card was and how much I wanted it. Like this was the finisher with recurring nightmare. I did champion deck. It had survival of the fittest, one copy of this, and you would always get this for survival of the fittest. So you would tutor for it. And then you would do recurring nightmare. So you would sacrifice a little creature and you bring this back and it would be amazing. So the protection from black was way more relevant back in the day because all the terrors and the destroy target creature, they were black. And they couldn't, they couldn't hit this. And that was actually a big deal. This was one of your finishers. The other one was the Verdant guy who created the 1-1 one -one Sparlings, and I remember those two. I always went with this one. This was one of the strongest cards back in the day. I've loved it ever since. So it makes me very happy to see it on the slight uptick. And I would buy, I mean, it's going down right now. It looks like it's going to be under $2 in any time, but artwork is truly unique piece of artwork um it reminds me of my childhood if you played during mirage you likely played or played against this card it's just so iconic to me uh, kind of like the jerzem Jin, except i didn't really play that much during um arabian nights yes i know that's arabian nights a very valuable set a very old set a very limited print run set but this reminded me of that where you just play and your opponent is like yeah that's a good card Next, uh, and lastly, Goblin Bomb. So let's talk about Goblin Bomb. I like these random effects, these coin flipping, and it just seems very interesting to me. Plus the fact it reads deal 20 damage. Like, you know, how many cards deal 20 damage? So during your upkeep, you may choose to flip a coin. Target opponent calls heads or tails while the coin is in the air. If the flip ends up in your favor, put a fuse counter on it. If not, remove, remove a fuse counter. So the reason I like this card is it's counter-based. 
there's a lot of cards right now that manipulate how many counters you can get. If you get five counters, it deals 20 damage to target player. That is not the best in EDH because we start off with 40 life, but it just so sounds so fun flipping coins and you know doing that stuff and manipulating counters. Um, and again, you could put 10 counters on this card and then deal 40 damage. It's not un... You could do it. And I think this card is fun. I just like these cards. I grew up with these cards. I remember so f them very fondly. And I believe the market is going to shift from the power level. The power level is still going to matter. But it's going to matter less than the collectability. And then are these the cards you grew up with? I can tell you Goblin Bomb was one of the cards I just loved playing. when I, I mean, it never worked. But it was like fun to play. I think a lot of people will enjoy Goblin Bomb. Like as someone who played during this period of magic, Spirit of the Night was a big one, Goblin Bomb was a big one, like for casual players. And as new, as older players come back into the game, these are gonna be cards they want to buy. And these are all on the reserve list. So when they wanna buy it, they are not going to really consider price as much because they just wanna own it and it reminds them of their childhood. Same with GI, uh, GI Joe toys, uh, Transformers, my Little Pony, if you go on eBay and you take retro games to the big one, these things have a lot of collector's value because people remember them when they were... A and I feel like a lot of people will go back to Magic the way that it used to be because they're disillusioned with the way it is today with standard bannings every few months and rotation happening. People, and then Modern Masters, Iconic Masters, 25th Anniversary Masters, they can't touch this. It's on a reserve list. Anyway, bye guys.